A hundred percent, yeah. Uh, you know, the, we're, we're creating this environment, unfortunately, where everyone's just coach dependent. Um, there has to be a level of responsibility for themselves, you know, that uh, I, I don't remember ever getting coached. Um, it's swung completely to the other extreme now. Uh, you know, we, we learnt because senior players told us and moved us into positions and you, you, you had to pick things up on your own and pick them up quickly. Now Nowadays, uh, you know, the players are being coached and coached and coached and, and so they become dependent upon that. But I think it's vitally important then that the coach provides them with opportunities, time, and, and equipment and assistance in order for them to develop themselves. You know, putting players in, in pairs, giving them time before sessions, giving them time after sessions to work on things that will improve their game. Because I, I don't think I've ever worked with a young player that hasn't had certain things about his game that might have stopped him from becoming a, a professional footballer. And it's up to you to identify what those things are and try and either improve them or hide them because they might never be any good at them. So try and put them in a position where they don't have to have to worry about that. So a, a five foot two player is never going to be good in the air. Um, he might be able to head it, you know, technically he might be able to head it, but there's no point in kind of hoping that he's going to be become, you know, this, this aerial threat or something. So forget about that. I've worked with some, some really good wingers uh, who were no good at tackling. Well, I wasn't going to waste my time making them good at tackling because they were never going to be any good. I'd much rather make them better at dribbling and better at crossing and, and better at, at, at uh, seeing opportunities to, to, to pass and, and create chances. So uh, it, it's continually looking at each individual player and saying, what, do, what can I do to help him to become the best that he can be? I think I like this question because I think uh, the world has changed a lot. Because uh, when I was a kid, I was uh, playing with a stone on the on the floor. I was playing against uh, a wall. I had a ball in one bag, and I was playing with that ball. And now it's completely different. Now it's PlayStation, so it's uh, mobiles, and so it's completely different. But it's true that the, in the past uh, you trained the, the technique uh, on yourself because uh, again you had. Uh, five, six uh, friends, uh, four backs, and you had two goals, one ball, and you played the uh, football. Now it's, it's different, but it's, uh, it's true that it's uh, always important to, to learn on your own because uh, at the end, uh, with your team, you're going to be just one hour or one hour and a half. I think it's massive. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on the sort of 10,000 10, hours um, to become elite at anything. You know, I'm not, I don't necessarily believe that, but what I do believe is that, you know, the younger you can be, just to feel, just to get that feel for the ball, um, just to just to get touches on either foot, just to learn to dribble either foot, turn, master the ball. Of course, 20 years ago, that you didn't have phones, you didn't have iPads, you spent a lot of time with the ball, and, and that's why I think there's um, so much to to master anything, to master any skill, um, you have to put time in uh, and you have to love it. And I think that's where the passion comes in. If you're passionate about it, you'll want to do it and you'll want to challenge yourself in different ways. But, but for me, it's just, so, you know, the, the more comfortable you can be, particularly in today's game, on the ball, receiving the ball, turning. And as boring as it is sometimes, they're the things you need to do up against the wall. Bang, receive, turn, back, receive, our volleys, volleys. You know, just so you're comfortable in any type of scenario. And I think for me, that's, um, that's the thing. If you haven't got that technical mastery, it's very difficult to then use it when you become under pressure in a game. For me, I still think that um, it's so important. So important to put in that, um, that extra time on your, your technical abilities. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sitting here as a coach, but you, you've only got to ask, you know, these top players, you know, your Lampards and um, Steve Gerrards, you know, Ronaldo's and Harry Kane, you know, Harry Kane, who 
Um, I knew as a, a, a young player and um, I think probably has surpassed you know, everything that uh, some people would have thought, you know, perhaps when he was younger. And the large majority of that is down to him, you know, the extra work that he puts in himself. He's had great coaches and great backing behind him. Um, but you know that that's that's a part of the game. There's no doubt that, that there are there are particular skills and that you are going to learn in playing in numbers, five a side, small sided games. You know they're they're massive, particularly in the in the modern game. But it, but you know one thing about our game that will always be there. It's a technical game, and um, and if somebody somebody can improve a technique by five percent, you know ten percent, it's going to give them. Uh, uh, a better chance, it will give them better options. Let's put it this way, so up until probably say 15 years ago, it might even be more than that, but let's just say 15 years ago, that's how players learn. It's as simple as that, you know, so we've got these fantastic academies and they're brilliant, they're absolutely brilliant and you know, it's one of them now. My my kids are a little bit older now, but if I ever had more kids, um, then you know, it'd be it's a great great environment to go and put your kids like when they're age of five, six, and seven, and they get so much out of it. Um, but we never had that 15 years or so ago, or maybe even 10 years or so ago. So we had to find a way of getting that, and we didn't realise it was a way of getting that. But you used to play on the street. You used to go and kick the ball up against the wall. You used to play two touch off the wall or you know, have a wally with your mate or, you know, playing off the curb or anything like that, just, you know, uh, perfecting your technique. So um, it's massively important. It's a way, it's a cheap way of learning. You know, you don't have to pay for it. You know, there's a, always a wall somewhere that you can find or a garage door, whatever it may be. You know, it's not that expensive to get yourself a ball. So it's, me, it's massively key because you get the best of both worlds. You get the opportunity to work with fantastic coaches in great environments regardless whether it's grassroots or professional, but then you've got the opportunity to learn how it used to be back in the day. Well, you set your standards, I believe, throughout your, throughout your career, and you, you try to, to keep, keep them up. You know exactly what you're looking for from the players. I think, more importantly, you, you want your standard of training to be very good. You want the players, the level of commitment in, uh, to be very good. And I think you're really keen to work with players who are energetic and, and want to want to help and show that they want to get better as well. I think the days where you know coaches can work with players who are maybe not that way, I don't think works now. I think players have really got to be keen to learn and improve as well. But I think to, to continue improvement, you have to keep going out to look. Even, even now in the roles I've had, I think the big thing is not to sit behind the desk and think that that's it, you've made it when you get a good job. I think it's, it's finding ways. And I think young coaches you know, like watching a session today, like watching similar sessions. I think it's a way of improving. I spent years and years on the road trying to go and watch clubs train or countries train. I uh, went to different international seminars all around Europe to try and find out more. But I think nowadays, because of programmes like this and, and the coaching that you can find out there, I think there's other ways you can, you can look to find and improve. Go that way. If I've got him facing this way like the small games, what did we say? If you can just touch the bottom of his back, you're close enough to him. I don't need to be doing this. So just enough to see the ball, so if he turns either way, then I've got a chance of taking it off him. Yeah.